This is Dr. Edith Ubuntu Chan. Welcome to The Dr. E Show, a show exploring the frontiers of our human possibilities in areas like health and wellness, science and spirituality, quantum biology, and conscious living, so that together we can awaken the best of ourselves and create our most joyful and fulfilling lives. Question for you. Have you had struggles sticking to healthy habits or any goals for that matter? Recently, we did a live webinar exploring why our approach to things like goal setting or new year resolutions just don't work. In fact, it's actually all backwards. In this webinar, we introduce a powerful new paradigm that's based on the latest understanding in quantum physics and the science of consciousness. And we received so much awesome feedback about this webinar that I thought we should share with you here on the podcast too. So please enjoy. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Edith Ubuntu Chan. Welcome to this month's Super Wellness Live. I love the new year time when everybody is sharing their intentions for the new year, sharing the goals and resolutions. So I have a question for you. Did you make new year resolutions this year? If so, how's it going? Has it been a joyful journey of sticking to your resolution? Or has it been difficult or a little bit of a struggle for you? Because now we're like new year's kind of behind us. Let's be honest. How are we doing with those New Year resolutions? And I'm guessing that none of us were born yesterday. So over the course of the last number of years, say the last five to 10 years, did you make New Year resolutions each year? And did you stick with it for January? And how did it go in February and March? Why is it that the vast majority of time we have the best intentions, right? But why is it that we don't really stick to our New Year resolutions the vast majority of the time? Is it possible that we've got the whole thing backwards and upside down? That's the topic of our discussion tonight. And so I hope that you'll find this information super juicy and inspiring. I'm super excited to share with you some big insights and aha moments I've had observing thousands of clients I've worked with one-on-one really take back control of their lifestyle and the secret sauce of what makes people successful. So if you have friends that might benefit from this information, I'd love if you would be generous to share with all your friends and family. Yay, Ellie, Tom, Teresa, Daniel, Jen, Wayne. So happy you guys are joining us. What a power pack gathering this is. So this is going to be a wonderful interactive discussion. So I thought of five nuggets to share with you that kind of all come from the same consciousness about what it really takes to make new year resolutions and intentions stick, not just for January, right? You hear about people just binge eating and drinking too much alcohol over the holidays and then they do dry January. And then they go back to a toxic, unhealthy lifestyle again in February. And how many cycles of that are we going to do until we decide maybe there is a better way? So the first thing I want to invite all of us to contemplate is this. Have you heard that quantum physics has found that physical matter is 99.99% space? Have you heard this? So what that means is that Anything that we do that is super focused on the physical matter, the physical solid material matter of life, is really focusing on less than 1% of reality. What I discovered is that actually most of the time we're barking up the wrong tree. There's so many examples like that. They've told us that we use only 5% of the brain and um, what else? Oh, when I study breathing, would we discover that humans are only using like less less than 30% of our, our breathing capacity? And there's so many things that life is just pointing us to the direction that what is the normal approach in our day-to-day life is actually focusing on a very small minority of reality. 
especially this fact that 99.99% of reality is actually empty space. So if that's the case, instead of focusing on physical stuff in life, maybe we should focus on things that shift our state of consciousness. Many of us want to do healthy lifestyle practices, but we're always looking to personal growth gurus that say, this is the tactic, this is the strategy. If you do this, you'll get this result. But maybe what we really need to look at is what is the state of consciousness from which people really get the results. So my first tip is to consider this big question. I'm just gonna go big right away. You've heard probably the famous quote from Einstein saying that the solutions is something along the lines of the solutions to our big problems cannot be solved at the consciousness at which the problem was created. I, I'm paraphrasing. You've probably heard a quote like this, right? So, so that means that if we're struggling with a certain aspect like healthy living, um, our finances, better relationships, it means that the real shift needs to happen in figuring out how we can level up our consciousness, not struggling at the same level where we have the problems that we created, but first figure out how to shift and transcend to a higher level of consciousness where the solution becomes a natural side effect. So that segues into my next point is, let's say your new year resolution is to eat healthier, to exercise on a regular basis, or to be more disciplined with your finances, or to cultivate a certain kind of lifestyle practice, whatever it is, right? So I'd like to ask you this. If these are the things you want, what if those things are actually side effect of something else deeper? Side effect of a different state of consciousness where that behavior that you want to emulate is actually a natural course that doesn't require rigid, militant discipline. Is that possible? Let's say you're trying to eat more healthy. Have you hung out with friends who naturally eat healthy without discipline, without militant, rigid kind of, you know, like I got to count calories, rigid, militant discipline? Why do they have such an easy time living a healthy lifestyle? Have you considered asking them that? And another approach to this is to consider this. Let's say you want to eat more healthy. Why? Have you asked yourself, really dig deep into why? Maybe your answer is, well, I want to have better energy. I want to be more clear-minded. I want to feel good in my body. I want to feel light and lively and youthful. I want to not be distracted by physical discomfort so that I can have a deeper meditation practice. Whatever those whys are, I want to encourage you to write down that as your new year resolution instead of those kind of tools, tactics, and behaviors. Because this has been a game changer. A few years ago, I started asking myself these why questions and then reverse engineered these healthy lifestyle habits by actually putting, instead of every day in my calendar, I gotta work out, I gotta eat this, I gotta do that. Like it, eventually that kind of militant discipline just becomes boring and not fun and rote and you're gonna lose interest. Instead of that, I figured out this awesome hack that I'm so excited to share with you. I asked myself the why question, and then I put on my calendar a question. Instead of a statement like today, you got to do X, I put on my calendar a question that says, how are you cultivating the highest level of energy today? Or how are you cultivating the most clear-minded state? today or questions like 
Who would you be if you knew you were the best in the world at what you do? How would you take better care of yourself to meet today's challenges? So I would sprinkle these types of probing questions that are open-ended, that inspire me to realize that life is amazing and magical and so full of possibility, and that as a side effect of meeting these questions each and every morning, it would make me inspired to go do my qigong, go drink my water, eat a healthier diet, take care of my lifestyle, because all of that is back in alignment in the right place within my life. And so all those healthy living habits happen as a natural side effect of me being reminded of these questions, these questions that remind me to live a life that is in alignment with my values, with my vision, and with my mission in the world. Does that make sense? So that is a little bit open-ended, but my advice to you is to not just kind of stay at the surface level of like everybody wants to eat right and exercise in the beginning of the, the year and then they fall off the bandwagon. Instead, why do you want to eat right and exercise? Is it because you want deeper connections? If, is it because you want to have the energy to live your vision, your mission, your purpose in life? Dare to ask those bigger questions and dare to put that as your daily reminder to keep you inspired and aligned on that journey. And there's a huge power in asking yourself daily questions, questions that will never ever go out of style, that are timeless, but that evolve with you as a person. Because isn't it true that right now, January 2019, I hope and trust that you're quite a different person than you were January 2018. Right? Think about all those beautiful things that have unfolded in your life, all the challenges overcome, all the gifts and lessons learned in the last year. But some of these questions, they never go out of style. They grow with you. They evolve with you. So those are the types of questions that I want to encourage you tonight at the end of this call to sit down and write out at least three questions that will prompt you and wake you up and remind you and align you back into that state of being where those so-called New Year resolutions that other people make, like healthy eating and healthy lifestyle, become, and of course I would do that, because I care so much about this vision of me that as a natural side effect, that's just how I'm gonna live. And if you find it to be a struggle, Another really helpful tip is was popularized by Jim Rohn, who was a personal growth coach back in the 90s that was so popular and has influenced many, many of us. And he's famous for saying that we tend to be the average of the top five people we spend the most time with because we're actually social creatures. And those of you that study consciousness and quantum physics, you know that we're all interconnected with the same field, which means that if we hang out with certain people, they radiate a kind of frequency, right? They radiate a kind of energy. And just like tuning forks that are near each other, when we hang out with each other, it's not that we pick up their lifestyle habits, it's that we resonate at the same frequency as them. And then as a side effect of resonating at the same frequency as the people that we hang out with, it infects us with a way of being in the world. And as a side effect, I can't emphasize enough, most of these things that people are working on are only side effects. That's the thing. As a side effect of leveling up our consciousness, leveling up our frequency, our state of being, a lot of those lifestyle habits that many of us are striving for become a totally natural side effect. So that's the through theme that I encourage you. It's like, it's, it sounds so simple, and yet it means that most of what we've been doing most of our life is barking up the wrong tree. And I hope that 
this doesn't feel depressing, but actually very inspiring and empowering because there's a much easier way. It means that if everything is about energy, everything is about consciousness and frequency, our first order of business is to level up our frequencies, level up our consciousness so that that lifestyle that we're seeking becomes a natural side effect. Does that make sense? I know this is kind of an advanced conversation, but I think most of our community, we are already familiar with things like consciousness, quantum physics, and how energy interacts with our material reality. So if you've been on the journey for a while, I hope that this new way, this is a new paradigm approach to New Year resolution, is really getting to the root cause level which is our consciousness, which is our state of being, which is the energy and frequencies that we emanate into the world, which attracts to us naturally a kind of life that can be a life of flow and joy and smoothness and ease and magic and synchronicity, or a life that is always an uphill battle, always a struggle, right? Not that there's not work involved when it comes to cultivating a different inner state of being there is for sure work but we align our efforts towards shifting our inner state of being healing ourselves deeply from inside out not just superficial you got to follow this diet you got to do this exercise program i think it's time for us to be more mature than that right it's 2019 and quantum physics has been around since the 20s for a hundred years. It's time for us to really start to live our life in alignment with what the latest science is showing us is the nature of reality and the nature of how just physics works, right? Let's start to live that reality together. So another great example, because when it comes to New Year, a lot of people are trying to eat more healthy. I wanted to just use this example from the Super Wellness book because through 16 years working with thousands of clients, I actually uncovered this great secret gem of what it takes for people to eat the perfect healthy diet. And if you've read the Super Wellness book, you know that it's called the FAN diet. Yes, you guys have heard about the FAN diet? The FAN diet is so simple, and it's the diet that I've seen make all future diets obsolete. Do you want to know what it is? It either makes all future diets obsolete or is actually going to make the diet that you want to fine tune, really fine tune, customize and work for you properly. It's called the fan diet. And all it is, is to listen and ask yourself three questions every time you eat. Question number one. When you eat something, is it fun and tasty? Because actually your human body, your taste buds is an incredible biocomputer, this incredible system of inner communications that your body, if you really slow down and listen, will tell you through the taste buds what nutrition your body actually craves and what it's not craving. For example, there's something called the zinc taste test. It's a diluted zinc drink that if a patient is deficient in zinc, when they drink it, that diluted zinc drink just tastes like a really delicious sweet water. But if a patient has more than enough zinc on board, when they drink the zinc taste test, it tastes disgusting to them. Now, everybody knows that we need zinc in our body as a mineral that allows us to have optimal energy, optimal immune system, is related to um, some hormone productions and thyroid production and so on. We need zinc in our body as a mineral that's really important, but you don't want too much or too little. So if you have enough zinc on board, that zinc drink tastes disgusting. If you need more zinc, that zinc drink tastes really delicious. That's just one of hundreds of examples of how our taste buds is always telling us if your body needs something or doesn't need something. And those needs go through different changes. When a woman is pregnant, she has different needs, right? And, and women in different weeks of the menstrual cycle, different. 
And athletes that are training for big athletic events, they might crave certain minerals or vitamins, and the taste buds will guide you and show you what your body actually needs and doesn't need. Add to that, if you are following somebody else's rigid militant diet and it tastes disgusting, there's no chance that long term you're going to stick with it anyway. And, you know, this new paradigm is really about deeply listening within ourselves and cultivating that inner awareness instead of giving our power away to some external so-called expert. Because at the end of the day, I think we'll all agree that you live with yourself 24-7, 365, and there is no chance that any outside expert will ever know you better than you because you are the boss of your own life. You know what works for you. And you know what works for you better if you choose to listen. You're gonna know better than anybody else out there. And that goes the same with food. Number one rule of the fan diet, your food must be fun and tasty. Number two rule of fan diet, your food should make you feel alive. Have you noticed if you eat dead, junky, processed food, you kind of feel like a dead person afterwards? Have you noticed when you eat foods that give you like a food coma, that it, it actually means that your body is spending so much energy trying to digest. In fact, if you eat a really big, heavy meal, they found that as much as like 50, 60, 70% of your blood flow leaves your brain and goes into your gut and works really hard to digest a big, heavy meal, and you feel like an idiot. I mean, it really lowers your IQ when you have food coma. So don't do it. You know, if you want to have good energy, good aliveness, good mental clarity, overeating or eating things that cause you food coma, it's really just not the most awesome feeling way to approach life. So rule number two of the fan diet is just listen. When you eat some foods that make you feel like a dead person, that's probably not the best diet for you. When you eat a food or drink a juice that makes you feel bright, light, and alive, if you have that aliveness, that's probably what's going to be working for you. So rule number two, aliveness. Rule number three is no negative effect. And that can take some time to tease out over time and it evolves over time. So if certain foods that you eat cause a negative effect, like allergic reaction, like a headache or a gut pain the next day or anything like that, then that's probably not the best diet for you. So what I've discovered over all these years is that I just ask my clients and my students, keep asking these three questions. It's like a Venn diagram. Fun and tasty, alive, and no negative effect. What is at the intersection of that? Three rules, fun and tasty, does it make me feel alive? Does it cause no negative effects? If we keep asking ourselves these questions, over time, I guarantee you will dial in the perfect diet for you. And that's called the fan diet, which as you can see is actually kind of an anti-diet. It's not really a diet. It's an invitation for everybody to stop giving their power away to external experts. Not that we shouldn't read books and learn and grow and receive good professional advice from everybody. Of course we should listen. But at the end of the day, remembering that we are each the boss of our own bodies, our own health, and our own lives, and to match up all the external experts' advice to what really deeply within ourselves resonates. Does this feel fun and tasty? Does it make me feel alive? Does it cause no negative effects? So that's the fan diet that makes all future diets obsolete. Now, I wanna take that to the next level because this approach has worked so brilliantly for my clients and my students that take my classes that people that struggled for years to lose those extra 10 to 15 pounds, they lose the 10 to 15 pounds. People that have struggled with sports performance, elite athletes, when they listen deeply in that way, they have skyrocketing performance. So I realized there's something really special about this approach that puts the power back in your hands again. And I started actually 
asking myself the fan guide questions just about life, you know, when it comes to engaging in new work projects, new activities, going to a party, who to hang out with. I ask the fan questions. So that's the power of the questions again. It never goes out of style. It is completely timeless and it will never be obsolete, right? Just like with the diets, these trends yo-yo up and down, and like the, the paleo and the keto and the South Beach diet, uh, macrobiotic diet, we've all seen these different systems come and go out of style, but I believe the approach of the fan diet is completely timeless. Likewise, in personal growth, you see different systems of productivity and time management and relationship management and all these trends come and go, but I believe the idea of asking yourself these questions, like, is this fun? When I engage in this activity, does it make me feel alive? And then does it cause me any negative effects? When I ask these questions, these are powerful questions that will never lead me astray and always guide me back into my path, into alignment, reminding me to listen deeply to myself, to learn what works for me and what doesn't work for me, and to not give my power away, once again, to external sources, to really take back control of my own life, to realize that this is my life, to turn into a masterpiece the way that I choose to play in this cosmic playground. So I hope that feels really exciting and empowering to you. I wanted to close with this really beautiful story of Anita Morgiani, which really reminds me of how important it is that we focus on our state of consciousness and state of being more so than whatever tool, tactic, or modality we choose. Have you guys heard about Anita Morgiani? I love her story so much, and it is a wonderful reminder during New Year's when so many of the things that are circulating around with New Year resolutions is like, oh, this is a tool, a tactic, a modality that you should choose. But Anita's story is that she actually had stage 4B lymphoma and she was comatose and actually on the hospital bed and um, I have giggling children off to the side. Very loud giggling children in the house. Back to Anita's story. She was dying of stage 4B lymphoma. And she wrote this beautiful book that I recommend everybody to read it. But what happened was that she actually went into a complete comatose and crossed over into the light. Prior to that, she had struggled with her cancer and done every alternative modality like acupuncture and Ayurveda and nutrition and juicing and all these kinds of modalities and her cancer continued to grow. And then she decided to go all in with chemotherapy and conventional Western treatments and that also didn't really work for her. And in the end, she had organ failure. She had lemon-sized tumors from the back of her neck all the way to her groin and her organs were failing and she crossed over into the light in a comatose. She describes this experience of seeing her own body, seeing the doctors and she saw her family down the hall I don't remember all the precise details, but in her book, she shares how she could also see that her brother was uh, rushing from the airport, stuck with the delay, trying to come to her deathbed. She saw all these things, and then she went into the light. And when she went into the light, she reunited with the spirit of her diseased father, whom she had a very tumultuous relationship with during his time on earth. And he had passed away a few years prior. It was at this beautiful reunion, this father that she didn't get along with because she's actually of Indian descent and they had set her up on an arranged marriage. And at the very end, last minute, she backed out of this arranged marriage. She shares so beautifully this story with so much heart and so much authenticity. Her father had actually 
excommunicated with her and said that she was ashamed to their whole culture. And so there was a lot of difficulty and stress and strife and drama in the family. And by the time she fell in love with her actual husband, her father had passed away, so he never could celebrate her actual wedding with the man that she actually loved and married for love. Anyway, she crosses over into the light. With all this drama and backstory, she reunites with her father, and everything is filled with unconditional love and healing. And she shares so beautifully that in that state, she realized that heaven isn't some kind of a place, that heaven is the state of being that she was experiencing. And all this understanding and wisdom was flooding in. And she realized that in her case, she doesn't make claims about other people, of course, but she realized that in her case, much of what happened in her life is that she approached everything from the state of fear. She approached her health from the state of fear. She did the Ayurveda and Chinese medicine and all these alternatives from the state of, I'm scared, I don't want to get cancer, I don't want to get cancer. And then when she did the chemo and radiation, it was, I'm scared, I don't want to get cancer. It was driven from the state of fear. And now when she's in this realm of complete bliss and ecstasy and unconditional love and oneness and this healing with her father, in that state, she realized that this state of being of complete unconditional love, if she could hold on to and bring back this state of being, that her cancer would vanish. And so there's more details to the story, but eventually she chose to come back because she decided she didn't want to just leave her husband high and dry. She had a choice. She was given a choice to keep going into the light to the point of no return or to return. And when she came back to her body in the hospital bed, it was a miracle. Within a few days, her organs started working. Within a couple of weeks, all of her lemon-sized tumors completely vanished. At week four, I think it was at week four, they did a CAT scan and they could not find a single trace of any cancer. And she teaches and shares that it was this new state of being that she brought back after this near-death experience that changed everything. And she started sharing her story with people and she was verifying that she saw all these things like that when, her, when she was supposed to be brain dead, she was experiencing full lucid consciousness that had this kind of omni, omniscient awareness that was blowing everybody's minds. But what was most mind blowing was that within four weeks, all of her cancerous tumors had completely vanished. Now, here's the kicker that is kind of my most favorite and inspiring part of the story is her doctor said, hey, now that you're stronger, we should do chemo again. And as I recall from reading the book, she was clear that she had no more cancer, so she really didn't need the chemo. But the doctors really pushed, and I don't know that I would have said the same thing, but she said, okay, well, let's do the chemo because I don't need it. But if you need it, let's do it. So she did the chemo, even though she had no cancer, she did it for the doctor's peace of mind. But now she's approaching it from a completely different state of consciousness. And from this state of consciousness, she had no side effects, no nausea, no weight loss. She kept getting stronger, brighter, no hair loss, no aches or pains, absolutely no side effects this time because she was carrying within her a completely different state of consciousness. It is such a mind-blowing story. And by week six, she was released from the hospital. And for the last decade plus, she's been completely cancer-free. And over time, word got out that she had this amazing story. And now she is a beautiful speaker and teacher and author of this new approach to life and to health and well-being. And I just, I'm so inspired by her. I'm such a huge fan of her work because that really speaks to how we opened up tonight's call which is that maybe our world has kept us barking up the wrong tree all this time. 
Maybe the most important thing for us to focus our energy and attention on is cultivating the state of being and the state of consciousness from which many things unfold naturally. And sometimes if we carry the right state of consciousness into these situations of our life, it almost doesn't matter which modality. In Anita's case, that is a powerful example of how when she brought back a different state of consciousness, this consciousness of complete oneness and unconditional love, deep, profound healing on a spiritual level, that many things on the physical level just unfold naturally. That's not to say that we don't need to put our skin in the game, that you can just work on your spiritual well-being and then eat junk food all day long and live an unhealthy lifestyle. But I think that if we have a certain kind of consciousness in our approach to life, many of those healthy lifestyle habits are really just small side effects that unfold naturally without so much rigid, militant discipline involved. So I hope that tonight's call has served you guys. So to review, I wanna encourage you to think about the 99.99 plus percent of life, which is made of empty space, which is made of our consciousness and not made of the physical material of life, and how you can align your new year resolutions to that. And also use the fan diet model, as an example of a way in which you cultivate a deeper inner state of awareness and use the power of big questions and set alarms on your calendar that pose these big questions on a daily basis to remind you to stay in alignment with your big vision in life, your big dreams, your big mission, and then let those so-called New Year's resolution types things just be a natural side effect of being deeply in alignment. And if interested, Anita Morgiani writes beautiful books. I encourage you to check out her story. I hope that I did it somewhat justice, her amazing story. She tells it much better than I do, of course, but I'm just such a big fan that I want everybody to know about her because she's such a powerful teacher and beautiful example of what is possible. And take advantage of community, really spend time hanging out with people whose life is already at a certain state of being that you'd like to emulate. Not to focus on what they're doing, but to shift into a state of frequency, a state of vibration, a state of consciousness that is the state of being that you would like to choose to embody more and more within your life. And so, that's it. I hope that these tips have served you now as homework. I want to encourage you to sit down and think about those big questions that you'd like to program onto your calendar to ding at you every morning, each and every day, so that it reminds you to stay in alignment to that state of consciousness, that state of being, that bigger vision of life that you carry within yourself. And if you love this kind of stuff, I want to encourage you guys to join us for deeper dives. We have an upcoming six-week super wellness intensive class in February. It starts mid-February, and we have a class that is Wednesday nights live in person in San Francisco, but also Saturday noon Pacific online live webinar via Zoom. So it's going to be a six weeks deep dive into holistic lifestyle best bang for the buck things that will really make a big difference in your life to supercharge your energy, to upgrade your life, and most importantly, to make you your own best healer, to take back power, to take back control of your life again. So if that interests you, go to superwellness.com slash events. All the information is always on there. We'd love for you to join us because you're an amazing person, and I know that as a community, we can all learn so much from one another. All right, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this call. Thank you. Much love and kisses. Bye. Hi, friends. Did you love that interview? If you did, please leave a review and share with all your friends so that many more people can benefit from these game-changing insights. You can also go onto our website, dredithubuntu.com, and subscribe to our newsletter, where you'll receive free trainings and next-level ninja tools that we only share on our newsletter. Together, let's turn your life into a brilliant masterpiece.